Hello and welcome to the second video for the first module for fractions. In this video, I'm going to talk about fraction arithmetic. Now some of these ideas go back many, many years in your mathematical experience. So I expect them not to be new, I expect you to have seen them and heard them before. But I do want to review them anyway just to get the conceptual framework clear and to make sure the notation and terminology is well understood, particularly if you studied mathematics in a different language or in a different place where the notations and terminologies can differ from how things are done in the typical English-speaking university mathematics environment. So let's review some fraction arithmetic, starting with addition and subtraction, which involves common denominator. One of the most important things to know about fractions, and one of the things we're going to extend when we do fractions with functions and variables, is we want to have a very, very clear idea on what common denominator is and how to construct it. So if I want to add two fractions together, figure out what this is supposed to be, I can only add fractions together if they have the same denominator. This is like comparing like parts. If I have fifths and thirds, they're hard to compare, they're different sizes. Or if I have some number of fifths and some other number of fifths, I can add and subtract those fifths together. So we, th we think of fractions as pieces, and we want to compare like things. We want to add fifths to other fifths, we want to add thirds to other thirds. We don't want to add fifths to thirds um, because they're not comparable. We want to change them into a, a form where we can actually compare them. So in this case, what I'm going to do is in each fraction, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator of the fraction by the denominator of the other fraction. So in the first one, I'm going to multiply by the denominator of the other fraction. In the second one, I'm going to multiply by the denominator of the first fraction. So let's do that. So in the first fraction, 4 fifths, I multiply the denominator and the numerator by 3. As I said in the previous video, you're allowed to multiply or divide numerators or denominators by anything you want as long as you do the same thing to the numerator and denominator. It doesn't change the fraction. If I do this, 4 times 3 is 12, 5 times 3 is 15. 4 fifths is the same thing as 12 fifteenths. It's the same portion of the whole. This doesn't change the fraction. In the second fraction, I take 7 thirds, I multiply by the denominator of the first. 7 times 5 is 35, 3 times 5 is 15, so 7 thirds is the same thing as 35 fifteenths. It's the same number of pieces, it's exactly the same size, it's the same number. Now I've expressed this first fraction as fifteenths, I've expressed the second fraction as fifteenths. They're now similar, similar, similar comparable parts. So now I can add them. 4 fifths plus 7 thirds, well that's the same thing as 12 fifteenths plus 35 fifteenths. Now I'm just adding fifteenths so I can combine them into one fraction, they're all fifteenths. 12 plus 35 is 47, and the solution here is 47 fifteenths using common denominator. If this had common factors I could try and reduce it to lowest terms, it doesn't, so I just leave it here. So if I have 4 fifths and 7 thirds, the sum of those things is 47 fifteenths. Exactly the same thing is true for subtraction. I find common denominator, I put them into one fraction over the common denominator. Now the issue of choosing a common denominator is a little tricky because there are lots of options available. The algorithm I told you in the previous example, whereas you multiply by the denominator of the other fraction, that will always work. But in this case, that's sort of annoying. I have 7 24ths and 11 36ths. So I, multiplying this times 36, multiplying this times 36, those numbers are going to get large pretty quickly. Sometimes you can choose a better, smaller common denominator, and that happens typically when your denominators already have common factors. And I'm not going to get into how you find these best choices of common denominators. For those of you who might remember, the choice of this common denominator is the least common multiple of your denominators. So if you remember your LCMs and how to calculate them, by all means go ahead. I'm not going to review that here, but I'm going to give you an example where I can choose a smaller denominator than 24 times 36. In this case, I can notice that 24 times 3 and 36 times 2 are both 72. So I can get to 72 by multiplying the first fraction by 3, top and bottom, and multiplying the second fraction by 2, top and bottom. So I'm going to do that. Take the first fraction, multiply by 3, top and bottom. I'm multiplying by the same thing, so I'm not changing the fraction. 
that's the basic rule. I can multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing and not change the number. That gives me 3 times 7 is 21, 21 over 72. Take the second fraction, multiply numerator and denominator by 2. 11 times 2 is 22, so I get 22 over 72. And then I can do the original sum. 7 24 plus 11 36 is 21 70 seconds plus 22 70 seconds. Add those up, I get 43 70 seconds. So that's an example of choosing a smaller comma denominator. Again, if you want to know exactly what the best thing is to choose, go and review the notion of least common multiple. That was subtraction and addition. Multiplication and division are in fact quite much easier. To multiply and divide fractions, we just multiply and divide, or to multiply fractions rather, we just multiply numerators and multiply denominators. No common denominator here. So 4 sevenths times 2 fifths, I just multiply numerators, 4 times 2 is 8, multiply denominators, 7 times 5 is 35, everything is good. You can think of this sort of as part of what we did when we reviewed order of operations, that all of this division and multiplication can happen in any order you want. What we are, we're doing here is we're taking 4, we're multiplying by 2, we're dividing by 7, we're dividing by 5. You can do those divisions and multiplications in whatever order you wish and still have the same result. That's essentially what's going on here. These are just the sequence of multiplications and divisions. If I want to write this sort of in general, if I have a fraction A over B and a fraction C over D, I multiply them together, I get the fraction AC over BD. For division, it's almost as simple. But to motivate this, I want to look at if I have 4 divided by 5, that's the same as the fraction 4 fifths. And using what we just did, that's the same as 4 over 1 times 1 fifth. 4 times 1 is 4, 1 times 5 is 5. So using multiplication of fractions, multiplying numerators and denominators here would just give me the 4 fifths. So what is happening here is I'm multiplying 4, and then I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of the thing I'm dividing by. And that makes sense because reciprocals are putting things into denominators, and denominators are just division. So when I'm doing or division of fractions, division of fractions is just multiplication by reciprocals. So to divide 4 sevenths by 3 fifths, I take 4 sevenths and I multiply by the reciprocal, the flip of 3 fifths, which is 5 fifths. And that's all there is to it. And it all comes from the fact that we're just doing multiplications and divisions and by order of operations, we can do those in whatever order we want. So 4 times 5 is 20, 7 times 3 is 21. So 4 sevenths divided by 3 fifths is the number, the fraction, 20 over 21. I can state this generally. A over B divided by C over D is multiplying by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal is D over C. So I get AD in the numerator, BC in the denominator. One way this often shows up is since division is just fractions, I can have A over B over C over D. And I call these nested fractions. That's a relatively common term. So fractions inside fractions. And this rule for division of fractions also gives me a rule for simplifying nested fractions. And this is a lovely little piece of technique for when nested fractions show up, you can simplify them by thinking of them as division. So by dividing by C over D, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And you get A over D, the top of the first and the bottom of the second in the numerator, divided by B over C. Exactly the same thing. This is the same. This is just writing that division in a different form as a nested fraction, one fraction over another fraction. So division of fractions also is a way of dealing with and simplifying and putting in a nicer form nested fractions.